the thing I keep coming down to is that it feels like scale is the enemy sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. The desire to go and scale systems up leads us to go and putting in all sorts of plus, you know, process and architectural um, you know, scaffolding to go and basically allow the work to go and happen. Yeah. And we know in our hearts that the work is going to slow down because there's more coupling and then there's more coordination costs across all the people and all the teams and stuff like that. Yeah. And you feel like going to the product people and going and saying, well, that set of features you just asked for, that's another product. That's not the same product anymore. Can we just have another product which basically goes and stands on its own and maybe it's a bit smaller and then you'll get more yeah. rapidity of development and it'll be a more niche thing. But this is all coming against like economies of scale and things like that. that yeah. It's easier to take a big thing and make it bigger than to go and make more small things, Yeah, you know, at product level and stuff. And, you know, so it, it's a weird thing. I, I wish that it were easier to have those conversations and sort of find the maybe 10% of cases where, you know, making something completely new is a better tack than going and enhancing something that already exists. Because I think yeah. that that's an under underexplored path for many architectures, you know, for many products in a way. Yeah, so. it, it, it is. I, I, it is complicated, though. I, I, one of the, I, I, I think this is one of the things that I saw in one, one of your videos when I was kind of reminding myself of your work for, for, for talking to you about yeah. today. But but um, one of the things that I think you, you said that I, I, I liked was that was that you know something that i believe profoundly one of the reasons why i like doing software development is because it's hard i, I like mm -hmm. it because it's i like that it's difficult i'm mm -hmm. okay with that i, I mm -hmm. enjoy the challenge i you know i i feel proud when i can come up with a nice solution to a problem mm -hmm. that's genuinely difficult and yeah. so i don't i don't i don't really mind that but i think it is extremely difficult and, and and i think it's even difficult when we're doing si simple so systems sometimes we, we, we're often just tiny steps away from some profoundly deep and hard to resolve problems and if we mm -hmm. make the so it's very it's it, it's a domain that's very easy to take missteps in i think software development yeah yeah and i i think one starting point is to to recognize that and to just pr proceed more cautiously, more incrementally, with, with with a little bit more defensive thinking in terms of design and implementation and so on. And and some of the stuff we've been talking about is is my yeah. version of that compartmentalizing things and so on, so I can worry about it in smaller pieces and so on. But but, but the, the, there are there are those different kinds of of systems. So so I I I, I dealt with a client who I, who I won't name, but they build build big complicated scientific instruments. And one of the mm -hmm. things that they uh, they were struggling for a long time, but you know, it's, it's a complicated problem. They're, they are genuinely complex devices, these devices that they're building. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, and they're building the whole software stack. And they were struggling with that and keeping it, you know, being able to make progress quickly enough. One of the, one of the ideas that they had, it wasn't my idea, but one of the ideas that they, that, that they had at some point was to do exactly what you just said. And they said, why don't we just start writing some micro apps and just releasing those? And, mm -hmm. you, know, we, you know, we've got this good idea, this good, simple idea, We'll just implement yeah. that as a standalone thing instead of it being part of this massive stack, yeah. of, you know, suite of software. And we'll just mm -hmm. do that, and it can get get the data it needs out of the machine, crunch the numbers, and present this this little little tiny part of the answer to a question. Mm -hmm. And that kind of liberated them to, to try lots of other things, riff fast on ideas, and try ideas. The counter to that is that we're also, you know, in, in industry wide, we're also building. You know, we're, we're building self-driving cars and space rockets that are going to go to Mars and all of those sorts of things. That those yeah. are software devices these these days to a large extent, yeah. and you've got to solve problems on those scales as well. So, so yeah. one of the things it seems to me, if we if we're going to think about engineering, is to think about mm -hmm. you know engineering at different scales. It, it's not going to be exactly the same everywhere. There might be some principles that are shared. At whatever mm -hmm. scale you're doing it, and I think that there are, but yeah. it's it's not going to be the same. And it and one of the one of the anti patterns that I see is the other way around as well, which is mm -hmm. tiny teams that are doing some relatively simple thing, adopting mm -hmm. the technologies and the disciplines of you know, Google or Amazon. You know, why you're not Google? Yeah, you know yeah. what, what? You know, nearly every team that I see these days starts with Kubernetes. Does every mm -hmm. team need Kubernetes? Is is that the best starting place for for solving the problem that's in front of you, or is that just slowing you down? I don't know. Yeah. So, 
but no, I totally it's, agree. It, it is complex. Like, yeah, definitely. And it's and, and it, yeah, I think the skill makes a difference. All the context you know, makes a difference for all these different things. And I think there's this other force as well, which is kind of like you know what can people expect when you're when you hire them, right? It's kind of like you know I think some technologies become pervasive just because yeah. You know, it's kind of like, well, if I'm not using this technology, that's the thing I can't put on my resume. You know, it's sad to, you know, realize that some people think that way. Yeah. Um, but it's like there's a lingua franca, I guess, that developers start to go and sort of like gravitate towards. And then basically companies realize that the hiring pool is there yeah. in a way as well, you know. So I don't know. It, it, it's, yeah, there's so many forces around this. It's really fascinating. You know, I, 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 I think that's kind of. In some ways, it's one of the advantages. I started a little bit before you, but not very long before you. I, I yeah. started in the, my professional career in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. But I think that one of the things, one of the advantages perhaps that we had was that the, the landscape was simpler. You know, the, the, there, was, the, the, there were fewer technical choices. There were fewer frameworks to pick up on. The, yeah. the, you know, and so one, you, you, you either had to do more yourself Mm -hmm. or you're going to be using frameworks that nearly everybody's familiar with anyway because everybody uses it.